Have you ever played poker? That seems like a really weird question to start out a, a, a lecture on computer organization, but there's a reason for this. Um, it, it, let's say that you have been dealt a hand, and this is going to be a pretty good hand. Um, I've got two aces, a three, and two jacks. All right. That's a pretty decent hand, right? Pair of, uh, you know, two pair. Um, that's okay. That's okay. Um, but the dealer, right before dealing these out, tells you that jacks are wild. What does that mean? Well, jacks are wild means that you could leave those as jacks if you'd like, but you could actually change them to whatever you'd like to change them to to give you a better hand. So, let's change a couple of these. Uh, if jacks are wild, why not change them to a four and a seven? How's that? Okay, some of you are thinking, man, I wanna play poker with you, Tarnoff. No, no. This is a worse hand, right? You don't want to do this. You don't want to. You don't want to grab a um, a hand that was two pairs and turn it into just one pair. Granted, the pair is a pair of aces, but still, you don't want to do that. So let's see. How about if I change those jacks to threes? That is a much better hand. That is a full house. Full house, right? So you've got a pair and you've got uh, three of a kind. That's a pretty good hand, right? Is that the best hand? No, it's not. What would be the best hand? Well, the best hand would be to take those jacks and make them into aces, right? Four of a kind, best hand you can make out of that. Pretty darn near unbeatable, right? It is. So, if you understood that, you will understand this next topic because the next topic involves, well, making the best out of what we've got that is changeable, alterable. I've got, I'm gonna make a, 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 a three input truth table here. So we've got A, B, C, we've got X. So we've got eight patterns of ones and zeros as we go through this list. All right, so we're sitting around the conference table, we're designing this, and we've decided that when A is zero, B is zero, C is zero, we need to output a one. Uh, zero, zero, one, we also need to output a one. Uh, how about one, zero, zero, we need to output a one. So we know that we definitely want to output a one in those cases. Um, and we know that for zero, one, zero, and for zero, one, one, we definitely want to output a zero, and maybe also we definitely need to output a zero for the last row. And we finished our design discussion. And for reasons that may not be evident in this discussion, in this lesson, um, we've decided that, you know, these two conditions, they should never happen. We should never get that, that condition to occur. Or we could look at it another way. If those, addition, if, those, uh, if those conditions do occur, we really don't care what the output is. So what do we put there? Do we put ones? Do we just make up things? Do we just force those zeros there or force ones there? No, because that would be like taking that poker ham and saying, okay, those wild cards, I'm gonna make it a three and a seven or a four and a seven or whatever, right? So instead, what we do is we put an X there. In those two rows, those two rows, we don't have, once again, either it's impossible to get to that condition, you know, or there, when we get to that condition, the, the, the outcome really doesn't matter from our circuit. Now, these two little X's have a name. They are referred to as don't cares. Don't cares. Okay, Tarnoff, look. I think you should have told us about these symbols way earlier because I pretty much don't care, right? No, I know that's not true. Because I would just, I, yeah, I know. In, in any sort of assignment that I'd be giving in any of my classes, I would just see truth tables full of X's. No, the X's have a purpose. The X's are our wild cards. So, and this, and I introduced wild cards or these don't cares at this point because they are particularly helpful. In fact, you really see the main help 
whenever we apply them to Karnow maps. So let's go ahead and make our Karnow map. Now it's going to be a, an eight cell Karnow map for the three inputs generating the eight rows of our truth table. A and B are still gonna identify the rows, still done in gray code. C is gonna identify the columns, right? All right, now we're just simply gonna map over. So what we've got is for this top left cell, zero, 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 that's top row of the truth table, that's a one. Next cell, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, that's the next row of the truth table. Zero, one, zero, we go to the third row, zero, one, zero, that has a zero in it. Zero, one, one also has a zero in it. Now, remember, because of the gray code, we're gonna do that funny little jump in the, in the rows of the truth table. So the Carnell map has that cell one, one, zero, that jumps us down to the seventh row, where we have an X. This cell right here is one, 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 that's the bottom row of our truth table, there's a zero there. Now, the bottom left cell of our Carnell map is for A is one, B is zero, C is zero, that is the fifth row where we have a one, all right, and this cell right here, 101, that is the sixth row, we have an X. All right, now, how do the wild cards work? Well, since we A, either know that there's no way we should be able to get to those conditions, or B, really don't care what the output is, the output has no effect on our circuit, um, we can make them a one or a zero, whatever we want to make them. So. How do we do this? Well, the Carnell map tells us, shows us what those settings should be. And it does it by making it so, remember, the fewer rectangles that we have, the fewer products in our sum of products expression. The larger the rectangles we have, the fewer inputs we have to each one of those products that's generated, all right? So we look at this one right here. That one can be paired with the one that's immediately to the right of it. Oh, great, so we'll have one variable dropping out. Now I can't double it to the size, I can't double its size to the row below it because I'm blocked by these zeros. But if I go up and around, I have a one there, but I don't know what I want there. Well, why don't I make it so that I put a one there? This becomes my rectangle, right? And what I'm saying is, is that particular X, that's, that corresponds to this X right here, what it's actually going to be in real life, because these X's are going to be something in real life whenever you implement the circuit. In real life, it's gonna be a one, but we didn't care, right? Now, what about this X right here? Well, if I make this X a one, I have to add another rectangle, not cool. If I make it a zero, however, we're done, we're done. And so this X is best, the best way it can go with its wild card scenario, right, is to make it a zero. Now, what truth table did we get? Well, we've got just, or excuse me, what sum of products expression did we get? Well, we've got just one rectangle. This cell right here, zero, zero, zero. This cell right here, zero, zero, one. This cell right here, one, zero, zero. And this cell right here, one, zero, one. What drops out? What stays the same? A drops out, C drops out. We're just simply left with B bar, okay? So X equals B bar. Wow, pretty quick way to figure out what to make those X's into, all right? So don't cares. We care about don't cares because what they can do is they can allow us by this whole idea of a wild card uh, or, you know, by this whole idea of a wild card, allow us to make simpler sum of products expressions. Heck, we really simplified that one, didn't we?